Hey everyone, here's our math problem for today. We are given here two complex numbers. Letter A, we have the imaginary unit I raised to the fourth, all raised to one fourth. And letter B, the imaginary unit I raised to one fourth, all raised to the fourth. Are these two expressions the same? You can pause the video and see if you can analyze if these two complex numbers are the same. Now let's solve this problem together. Let's do some review first. And let's draw the complex plane. Again, the horizontal axis is the real part, and this is our one. This is our imaginary unit i. Here is negative one, and here is negative i. Now, in this complex plane, this one is also equal to i raised to zero, because any number raised to zero is equal to one. This i here is i to the first. This negative one is i to the second this negative i is equal to i to the third. And if you continue rotating, this one also is equal to i to the fourth, i to the fifth, and so on. So we are going to refer to this later on as we solve these two problems. So how are we going to simplify this letter a? We can make an assumption. Let's assume that the law of exponents for the set of real numbers also work for the set of complex numbers, and therefore, we can write this as i, raised to the product of 4 times 1 fourth. And therefore, we would say that the value of this expression for letter A is equal to i to the first, or simply i. Now, is this true? Now, what if we simplify first the expression inside this parenthesis? Notice that i to the fourth, we said, is equal to 1. And therefore, another way of looking at this problem is to note that i to the fourth is equal to one, and therefore this becomes one raised to one fourth. And we can write this in radicals as the fourth root of one. And what is the fourth root of one? In the set of real numbers, this is equal to one. Now we have a problem because in the first analysis, the value of the expression is equal to i. In the second analysis, the value of the same expression is equal to one. So what's the problem here? So there seems to be a problem. So how are we going to resolve this? Notice that this one in the complex polar plane, this point can be expressed in terms of the formula z is equal to r e raised to i times theta. Therefore, this one here is equal to the radius, which is one unit. We don't have to write that one anymore. We copy the e i times the angle, at this point, the angle is 0, plus multiples of 2 pi. Every time I rotate 2 pi, I'll go back to the same point. So we put plus 2 n pi to show that we can add multiples of 2 pi. That is that one. And that is raised to 1 fourth. And simplifying this, this becomes e raised to i, 0 plus 2 n pi is 2 n pi, times 1 fourth is n pi over 2. So times n pi over 2. Now let's take values for n. If n equals 0, what is the value of this expression? This is e raised to i times 0 times pi over 2 is 0, so this is equal to e to the 0, or simply equal to 1. Now, if n equals 1, this expression here becomes e raised to i times 1 times pi over 2, or pi over 2. Now, in this form, this is the imaginary unit i, this pi over 2 is the angle. The angle is pi over 2, and pi over 2 is here, the radius is 1, so that is this point, which is equal to i. So this is equal to i. For n equals 2, this becomes, this expression becomes e raised to i times 2 pi over 2, or simply pi. Again, the radius here is 1. This is the angle, and the angle is pi, which is this point, with a radius of 1 unit. And that is equal to i squared, or negative 1. And if n equals 3, this becomes e raised to i 
the angle is 3 pi over 2. And at 3 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2 is here, the radius is 1, that is equal to negative i. So, what does this mean? This means that the fourth root of 1, which is 1 raised to 1 fourth, has four possible values, and they are 1, i, negative 1, and negative i. So these are the four possible values of this expression, the quantity i to the fourth, all raised to one fourth. And so the first result that we arrive at using this first method is i, which is this i. The second one we arrive at was one, which is this value. And in fact, there are two more values that we haven't accounted in the first example. And that is the nature in the complex world. The fourth root of one has four possible roots, one, i, negative one, and negative i. In this apparent contradiction that we arrive at when we perform steps one and two are not actually contradictions. These are the result of the nature of this expression being multi-valued. This has four possible values. And these two are just two of those four possible values. And therefore we say that when we perform log exponent, specifically the power of a power, we should be careful because this expression is multi-valued. There are many possible results that you can arrive at considering that in the polar form, we can add multiples of two pi to arrive at the same point. And we need to be particularly careful when the exponent is not an integer like one fourth. Now how about here in letter B? We have i raised to one fourth raised to the fourth. So first, let's simplify the inside exponent, i raised to one fourth. We know that i is this point, and this can be written as e raised to i times the angle. What's the angle here? That is pi over two, plus multiples of 2 pi, which we write as 2n pi. This is this i, and that is raised to 1 fourth, and all of them are to be raised to the fourth power. So simplifying, we now have e raised to i, pi over 2 plus 2n pi can be written as pi plus 4n pi, all over 2, but since you have here an exponent 1 fourth, multiplying the two exponents, we have one four times one half is one eight, so this is over eight, and that is raised to the fourth. And then simplifying, multiplying again this inner exponent times that outer exponent, we have e i pi plus four n pi divided by two, and this is now the equivalent form of i raised to one fourth, all raised to the fourth in the exponential polar form of this complex number. Now let's take values for n. Let's say n is equal to zero. What is the result here? If n equals zero, this part here is zero, we have pi over two. So we have e raised to i times pi over two. So the radius is one, the angle is pi over two. So the radius is one, the angle is pi over two. This is the point and that is equal to i. If n equals one, this becomes e i, n is 1, so we have 4 pi plus 1 pi is 5 pi all over 2. So we have 5 pi over 2, and 5 halves is 2 and 1 half. So we have 2 pi and 1 half. We arrive at i. If n equals 2, this becomes 4 times 2, 8 times pi is 8 pi plus 1 pi is 9 pi all over 2. So you have e raised to i times 9 pi over 2. And again, you have 2 pi, 4 pi, and 1 half, you end at the same point, i. And that is also true when n equals 3. When n equals 3, this becomes 4 times 3 is 12. So 12 pi plus 1 pi is 13 pi over 2. So we have e raised to i times 13 pi over 2 is, again, this point, i. So what do we notice here? We arrive at i, i i and i. So no matter what the value of n is in this second example, the value of the expression is always i. Whereas in letter A, we have four different values. One, i, negative one, and negative i. So what's the takeaway here? The main lesson here is when you apply the power of a power rule of exponents, you need to be very careful when you raise it to non-integer exponents. 
like this one fourth. Both of these two are multi-valued, only that letter B has results that are all I's, whereas letter A has four results that are distinct. We have one I, negative one, and negative I. Be careful when applying the power by power rule when you are dealing with complex numbers. The same is true with the power of a product and the power of a quotient.